what is up everyone? I uh, thought I'd make a quick video uh, about a little project I'm working on. Um, I've done something like this in the past, but uh, it was for a Ghostbuster sweater and I kind of just posted it on Instagram. But what I did was <clears throat> I got this $10 Fruit of the Loom sweatshirt from Walmart and then ordered some patches online. So a couple of these I've had forever, I'll say. So a Pac-Man and some ghosts. These are iron on and you can tell by the uh, kind of material on the back it's sort of shiny so that's like the glue so pac-man and ghosts and then i ordered these ones just last week and they actually showed up really quick so aliexpress showed up really quick these are about um 250 each canadian and they're a lot bigger than i thought and they're really nice so a nice nintendo one playstation one an atari one and a sega one there was an Xbox One, I um, actually didn't like it, so I didn't buy it. It had the original Xbox logo, <coughs> excuse me, and, um, you know, I didn't buy it. I kind of regret not buying it now because I have an idea for this um, sweatshirt. So what I was thinking of doing was, since Nintendo is probably my number one favorite thing, I was going to put the Nintendo mm -hmm. one here on the chest, uh, kind of off to the side, and then I was actually going to do the other logos down one arm. So I'm not really sure how that would look, but I was thinking like the Atari one at the top and then kind of go by size, PlayStation, Sega, um, and the Pac-Man one I was actually going to put on the back, kind of across the back of the sweatshirt. Um, so I'm going to think about that, but for now I'm definitely going to put the Nintendo one on. And um, like I said, these patches are really nice quality. Um, so I have a towel underneath the Nintendo logo. Um, I kind of have it positioned where I think will look right, sort of like midway point um, down from the collar and then um, kind of halfway in the shirt. I have a towel underneath here. Um, and um, yeah, so I have my iron heated up already. So we will iron this and then see how it goes. And kind of hold these on for probably 30 seconds. I think you're actually supposed to iron them from the back too, which I'm not even going to attempt to do. I didn't do that on my Ghostbuster sweater and it worked out okay. So that worked out fine, but let's see how it does. So that one did not even start. Let's try that again. So kind of here, let's hold it here. I have this on quite high and turn it up some more. Maybe I didn't have it high enough. <clears throat> so we'll turn this up and we'll hold this here and Make sure it starts to melt in. So basically the glue on the back will uh, melt in to the sweatshirt. <clears throat> I just kind of keep checking it to see if it's gluing. Not that I can tell, of course. I don't know why I'm checking it. this here for a while and make sure it gets good and hot. I think once this one's set then um, I'm going to check out the other um, logos and kind of think about where I'm putting them. But yeah, I'm just going to hold that there for a sec. While we wait, I'm enjoying a relax from Royal City Brewery. This is a Goza. I'm gonna just assume I have that straight. It's looking pretty straight. It's definitely sticking now. It's extremely hot. You can kind of see the glue come out from the edges too, once you uh, have it on. It's very subtle, but you can just sort of see it coming out the sides of the uh, logo. <coughs> pretty good looks like it's on there this will be one of those sweatshirts that if people find it 30 years from now they'll wonder if it was an official Nintendo vintage sweatshirt so that's what I'm hoping <laughs> of course it's not let me put this down <clears throat> remove these other logos I 
Yeah, that's just in on there pretty good. On the back, um, you don't really see anything on the back. I, I think I read somewhere that you're supposed to kind of do it from the back. And go a little bit longer on that. Do it from the back as well. That's what she said. <clears throat> this is exciting watching me iron. Probably shaking the camera too. Okay. We'll assume that that is done. It looks on there pretty good. Very hot. Yeah, right around the edge, you can just sort of see the glue um, from the back of the logo coming out. So, you can see that. Check the camera. Yeah, so that's the Nintendo one on there. And then, um, looking pretty straight. I didn't measure, just eyeballed it. Um, and the idea with the arms, hmm. This is a bit trickier. I think we should do the Pac-Man on the back because I'm kind of committed to that idea, I think. Let me turn this around. I have a towel in here, like I said. So the idea with the Pac-Man one is that, I mean, I know it's pretty much game specific, but I think I'd just put it back here. Mostly because I'm not going to go create a Pac-Man only sweatshirt. I've had these for probably over a year. Um, so, I kind of just want to get them on something. This will be like my video game sweatshirt. So, I'm going to do, I'm going to do the ghosts first. Kind of have them off center. And put Pac-Man in next. So let's try this. I'm just hoping the glue hasn't kind of worn or I'll say isn't working on these anymore because it's been so long. <clears throat> Exciting. I might have to time lapse this and speed things up like the magic of uh, Hollywood. I'm going to put the Pac Man on there too. That is hot. Things do get very hot. Pac-Man kind of below them. And then the sleeves uh it's kind of tricky just because of the side. Let's see if this looks alright. I think it will. I don't think it'll look silly. I mean I could do one sweater per logo, but that's a lot. I have a bunch of uh, beer ones as well um, that I'm going to do. Some local craft breweries, and then I have a Pabst Blue Ribbon one, mostly because Pabst is associated with pinball. So I'm probably going to do another sweatshirt. It'll be another gray one with all beer um, stores or breweries on it. And then um, I actually have a bunch of Star Wars patches, um, but I don't know if I'll put them on. Um, some of them are kind of like printed on. These are definitely stitched. There's ones you can find online that are just printed, um, and you can definitely tell they don't really look that great. So um, I think I just got them kind of loose in some other gifts or something. Um, and then actually the brewery ones I have, a couple of them are so on. Um, so I'm going to have to get my wife to do a better job than I would to sew them on. That's the Pac-Man ones on the back. Looks like it's on there pretty good. Yeah, you can definitely saw the glue on that one. Okay, so that is the Pac-Man one. Let's take the towel out. So let's see. So we have Nintendo on the front, Pac-Man on the back, and then the arms. This will be tricky. So I was thinking of doing. The left arm 
Um, could do one on each shoulder. I don't want to do that though. I don't think I'm going to be able to put the towel in here either. Problem too is getting this really flat to actually be able to iron it on. Um, so the nice thing about this is I can see the midline. It's pretty smooth right here. So I could do Atari, PlayStation, Sega. Actually, I'm not gonna do Sega. The Sega is kind of wider. It's gonna look right on the arm. I think it will. I'm kind of getting all the way down to almost the sleeve. This will be on the elbow. This will be more like an elbow patch. I think we'll just have to risk it and see. Risk it. Hope everything goes to plan. So, the nice thing about this is you can kind of tell where everything should go. So, do the second one first. I guess I'm committing now, eh? This is just something I probably wear around the house. Of course, now it's going to be spring and summer in Canada coming up, hopefully soon. So I'll just be wearing this in the evenings if I'm out on the deck or something. Or when I go to the cottage. Early morning garage sailing for sure. It gets pretty cold when the first garage sale hits around April here. Um, it's usually not more than five degrees. So um, I know in the past I've gone out and kind of just risked it and end up regretting that I'm freezing my butt off. There's the Sega one. They're getting pretty close together. You never know. Maybe I'll go back and buy that Xbox one at some point. So we'll make that there. Yes, yeah, so the first garage sale in Guelph uh, officially announced is the Evergreen Senior Center. And um, April 27th, I think it is. So I went to that last year. Um, got there early. Was There was a bit of a lineup. Went in. I uh, hate to say it, but it was typical old people stuff with the exception of a lady selling a uh, vintage Gretzky lunchbox from Aladdin uh, and uh, a box of GoBots and vintage Hot Wheels. So I ended up buying the lot for 20 bucks. Um, I think she had 20 on the uh, lunchbox alone. And then I ended up selling the lunchbox for $65 um, to a person in uh, Alberta. So. Vintage Gretzky lunchbox with the Oilers sold it to someone in Edmonton or in Alberta at least, so that makes sense. And then the GoBots, I kept a couple of them that I actually had as a kid, and I sold the rest off and made a nice little profit. So that was kind of my first garage sale last year. There's also uh, usually around that time there's a uh, church sale where basically you just find stuff and they make up a price at the cash. So last year I actually picked up a. Um, uh, Boss Hog uh, vintage Dukes of Hazard figure for 25 cents. Um, that was pretty much all I found at that sale, but pretty cool item nonetheless. So hopefully putting these on the sleeve works out. Hopefully uh, they show up. Um, it's kind of time consuming. You guys get to watch me do this. I like that Sega logo. I was hoping to find a pinball machine, uh, but I didn't seem to be able to. Um, Locate one. That's a nice PlayStation logo. Yeah, the Xbox one was the old logo, and I don't know, it bugged me. I just, I felt it wasn't, I know these are all, I mean, they're logos, essentially, but the Xbox one just, I don't know, didn't look right to me. Didn't sit well. But at least I think I've left room that I can add it after the fact. If I want to go back and get it. I think those are all pretty much on there. I don't know if I'm gonna have to model this for you guys. As long as the heat dies down. Let's see. So yeah, those look like they're on there pretty good. Um, I feel like this is gonna be like one of those racing style shirts. So Atari one, I don't see any corners popping. PlayStation one, I mean, yeah, you can bend this. It doesn't seem to come off. You can wash these too when you're done. Um, so yeah, so let's see how Kind of like looks here, Nintendo. Got the sleeve. What do you think? It's pretty cool. I think it'll work. I'll try it on here and then uh, 
the camera going for you guys. Hopefully it's cooled down by now. Oh, it's still hot. Yeah, actually the ones on the sleeve worked out. I'll tell you that right now. Let me see if I can wipe my camera here. Oh, I can't see the screen. <laughs> anyway, here's the Nintendo logo. Here's the sleeve. Kind of happy with that. Probably could have gone a little higher on the uh, Sega one, but overall I think it works out pretty good. They're on the side. Have room for one more. So that's pretty cool. Nintendo on the front. That's my main jam for sure. Anyway, um, that's the end of the video. So thanks for watching, and we will talk to you next time. If you like this video, be sure to click like and subscribe, and my social media links will be below. Leave a comment, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks. Do a little tour of the basement before we go. Hoverboard, Almanac. This is my wife's Wizard of Oz stuff. This is some very nice Star Wars print I picked up. And another really cool piece. Love this piece. Alphabet. A lot of cool 80s stuff. And that is it. We'll end on the hoverboard. Check you later, guys.